Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hopefully you are enjoying some upgrades to my studio. I even have a nice new podcast mic because we are starting a podcast here. So if you guys wanna let me know which guitars you want me to talk to, drop them in the comments. But that's not why you're here today. You clicked because you wanna learn the only two best arpeggios exercises that you need. And that's what I'm going to show you. All right, so I broke this down into two basic levels. The first level, we're gonna look at a 2-5, 2-5-1 and C, just keep it simple for the concept, since this will apply a lot to beginner and intermediate jazz guitarists. The first thing I want you guys to do is practice your root arpeggio in position. So we'll go through it. And then that's on the ascending. So practice your root arpeggio in position on the ascending. When we come back down descending, we're going to do two notes per string from the scale that we're on. So in this case, since we're doing D minor, G7, and C major, we're just gonna do two notes per string from our C major scale. Let's take a look at this for D minor seven. Right, so going up, we do D minor seven. We're starting on A as our lowest note. You could also have started from F. too, but um, that was a little bit of a stretch outside of position for what I thought we were doing here. Again, I like visualizing the chord. So this is the D minor seven I'm visualizing as I play this arpeggio. And if you're a beginner, you really want to emphasize understanding what notes you're playing as you're doing this. So not just running the shape. In order to do that, I recommend practicing this like this. A, C, D, as slow as you need. F, A, C, then you'll get faster. D, F, A, G. F E C A F E C A. As you can see, you want that recognition. If you're slow in being able to name the notes, then you're also slow in being able to identify the note in relation to the chord, and, and that makes a big difference in being able to improvise more freely. So, the purpose of this first level, well, again, we'll do it also with G7 and C major. If you guys want to get the free PDF for this, it is in my free community. Just find the link for this YouTube video. Um, the purpose of this first level is really getting an awareness of the notes of the main basic arpeggio, the, the sound of D minor seven, D minor seven arpeggio in that position. So the fretboard awareness and just that fundamental awareness of what the notes are for that chord. If you're at that beginner level, that's really important. The next level that we need to do will involve some other types of arpeggios. But first let me play the G7 arpeggio in this position and C major seven, then we'll move on to the next level. At the end of this, you're gonna to wanna to stick around because I'm gonna show you how those arpeggios are working to build into lines. So we go right from this exercise type of thing to building some music, but that's once we get to the end, when we get there. All right, so let's do G7. Lastly, let's do C major seven. Okay, so once you've practiced those, you're ready to move on to level two. And for level two now, we are going to work on arpeggios that are not based on the root. So for a D minor seven, we're gonna look at F major seven arpeggio. Those notes, F, A, C, E over D minor, give us a nice minor nine sound, F, A, C, E. So we don't have a root, rootless arpeggio. Rootless in the sense that the root of the chord we're playing over is not in our arpeggio. After that, we're going to use a um, F major seven flat five, F major seven sharp 11 sound for our G13. Those notes would be F, A, B, and E. And that is because for D minor seven, we have the C is an important note, the seventh. But when we go to G seven, we want that C to instead be a B note. So we make that adjustment, but basically still F major. And then when we get to C major seven, we're gonna use an E minor seven arpeggio. Again, that creates a C major nine type sound. We don't have a C that we're playing. Instead we play E, G, B, D for E minor seven arpeggio. All right. So let's play through those in 
this method, we're not doing it in position because in addition to being able to play arpeggios in a certain position, you need to be able to work on connecting and moving diagonally through the guitar. A lot of the movement and pattern, the flow of the guitar is a diagonal type of movement. And so for these arpeggios, not only do I like to do them rootless, but also moving through positions. And that lets you move more fluidly. So we're combining knowing the arpeggio in a certain position and being able to move out of that position to higher from higher back into that position. If you have a combination of all of these things, you're really on your way to being able to visualize the fretboard in this key very easily as the chords are changing. And that obviously will help you with playing through the changes in a jazz context. So let's get to this first one for D minor seven. Now for the G13, let's play our F major seven sharp 11 arpeggio. And the last one, our E minor seven arpeggio for C major seven. Especially for the major seven arpeggios, you can see the that I'm moving really far up through the position. Um, and that's because for a lot of these, we have these minor thirds built in, like B to D and E to G. And we have to make those jumps in that way. But in a lot of ways, that makes it easier when you need to play it fast with just two notes per string. So once you've worked those out and really understood how that movement goes, now let's see how do I actually see that framework in a line, in an actual line. So we're gonna do two examples of a two five in like a longer two five where it's one measure each for each of the chords. And then also in a short two five where it's one measure for the two and the five together and then one measure for the C major seven. So let's look at our first example. <laughs> So as you can see for that one, I'm using that F major seven shape here. Just straight up the F major seven arpeggio for D minor. And then we're using this pattern for G seven, but adding in some chromaticism between the D and the B. Either doing four notes or two notes on the descending side. Then when we get to our C major using an E minor seven arpeggio, ending up on the sixth. Okay, so that's for the first one. All right, let's look at our second example. All right, this one's really nice because it's using notes that are just in the C major scale. We're not having any alterations. So this first part is coming straight from our level two arpeggio on the descending side for F major seven over D minor. And then we go into the level one arpeggio for G seven, just straight up G seven. Ending on the ninth for C major, right? So we have. This is probably a little bit of a tricky jump for you guys at first. That. You need to remove the first finger as you drop the third finger. And then from there, it's pretty simple. I also like sliding into the E just for a little embellishment. Okay, and for our last two examples, let's look at a shorter two five and how we can still make these connections and just use shorter segments of this full arpeggio. So just four notes from the arpeggio for the D minor, four notes of the arpeggio for the G seven instead of the full thing. You wanna have the awareness of the full arpeggio so that you can decide in the moment which of those four notes makes sense based on where you ended off in your improvisation. So let's take a look at those. So for this, I really want you to visualize these two groups of four notes. We have the F major seven arpeggio right there. And then for G seven, we have this shape, right? Almost think about it like an A flat diminished voicing resolving to the G, the fifth for C major seven. All right, let's look at our last example here for the last short two five.
So again, for this one, we are using arpeggios from the previous levels. The first one. We have that same F major seven, but using this group of four notes, C, A, F, E. Then we jump to our F major seven sharp 11, basically changing C to B for that G 13, the E, the B, the A, and the F. And then again, resolving this time to E. So I think of those four notes, Any way we adjust rhythmically or adding in some chromaticism doesn't change the general shape and group of those two spots. D minor's here. For that G7 going there. So that's where we start to play with it. But I'll get into that concept in another lesson. Um, for now, just practice these two different ways of going through your arpeggios, no matter what song you're working on. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you guys want to see in future lessons, and I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks. Oh, and also put which uh, guitarist you want me to interview. I have a couple lined up, but I'm curious who you would be interested in hearing from. Thank you again. See ya.